Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and my third film at this year's Sundance Film Festival was the science fiction drama After Yang. It was written and directed by Kogo Nada and it's based on a short story by Alexander Weinstein. It has a very wonderful and very unique opening scene that shows the movie's main family engaging in their regular virtual dance battle against thousands of other unknown families. It seems to be a very popular pastime in the world of the movie which is set in an undefined future. This energetic dance battle is also a pretty creative way to give us at least an early glimpse of I think pretty much all other actors that will pop up at some later point in the story. But what follows after that little virtual competition is far from the initial energy, as after Yang slowly and very calmly explores familiar sci-fi topics like AI, existence and memory. Kogunada's film fits like a meditation and it's certainly no coincidence that our main protagonist Jake, played by Colin Farrell, is someone who makes a living by selling tea. This feels like a film that wants to be taken in like a good tea. Just relax and let it slowly move you. Jake is part of a family of four. There's his wife Kira, played by Jodie Turner-Smith, the daughter Mika, played by Malaya Emma Chandravichacha and then there's the titular character of Yang, played by Justin H. Min. Yang is a humanoid robot, bought by Jake and Kira to support their adopted daughter Mika and also teach her things about her Chinese heritage. As the lyrical title suggests, the story of the movie takes place after Yang. After Yang has unexpectedly stopped working. After he has died in a way. But a machine should be able to be repaired and Jake is trying to fix him. And while doing so, he is able to access the memory banks of Yang and watch the few seconds that Yang deemed worth saving each day. So it's a story taking place after Yang's death and simultaneously we are brought back to the past through his memory. But also the memories of Jake or Kira who are thinking about their time together. After Yang is a very soft and melancholic film. It's also told like a mystery in which we and Jake slowly learn more about Yang's past. This sci-fi setting and the bittersweet tone should have been right up my alley and yet I was only partially able to enjoy and appreciate after Yang. Kogunada's film has a very distinct style. The futuristic setting seems a little bit like hipster's paradise. Everything seems to be so super neat, mindful and harmonious. I was into the film's very slow pace and laid back nature for a while and it reminded me a little bit of David Lowry's A Ghost Story, which is also this very peculiar examination of love, loss and existence and also one of my favorite films. But after Yang became too one note for me, too monotonous. At some point I just got bored and also a little bit annoyed about the constant whispering of all characters, the repetitiveness of the driving scenes. Jake is seen in this self-driving car at least 5 or 6 times I guess and the talking about tea. It became ponderous for me and a little bit too full of itself. And in the end there wasn't enough for me to grab onto. I give after Yang 6 out of 10. It's more like 6.3 but I don't do that. Alright, that's it for today. I hope you are looking forward to more Sundance reviews coming your way. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like and make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.